Well, let me ask you about, um, it seemed to me like the orchid thief might be another example of this sort of where you go in, um, for people who haven't read it, it's um, the orchid thief is nominally, um, what would you call him? <laughs> John LaRoche is a, sort of a hustler, yeah. right? Like a spy, and so um, he's, he wants to steal these orchids from the Fakahatchee in Florida, um, and he has a plan that he's gonna make millions of dollars, and he's sort of orchid obsessed. But in the course of your reporting about him, there's often times where you know, you're know you calling him, and he's not, he's like the quintessential unreliable character yes. to the point where, he decides sort of two thirds of the way through the book that he doesn't care about orchids anymore and that's it. Like he's done right. with orchids. He's gonna be a computer analyst or something. Right. Um, so I just kind of wondered if you could talk about, you know, I think then the book ends up being more about your obsession with, you know, him and people's obsessions in general, but right. did you have to go through kind of a whole, process of rethinking, I was wondering, as you, you know, you come to do it about him and that sort of takes yeah. a turn. Well, uh, to sort of reiterate what I just said, I think that, first of all, I tend to write about things I know nothing about, and that's why I'm interested in writing about them. I don't like to over-prepare before I begin doing my reporting. I'd rather immerse myself in the world and, and let it unfold. And that in, inevitably means that things are not neat and they don't follow the comfortable path that you would expect, and nor should they. Um, I think that, you know, I'll give you an example of when I first started as a, as a you know, my very early days as a journalist and I was doing a little bit of work for Newsweek. And they had asked me, they said, we're doing a story about um, kids, um, I'm trying to remember what, oh, about kids ratting on other kids for using drugs. We have a story that we're gonna do. This is a trend. And I found a girl and actually it was a much more interesting story. I mean, she had ratted out a friend and then it turned out that actually they were competing drug dealers. And, you know, so it was sort of a he said, or she said, she said, and it was a very complex, interesting story. And you can, I can promise you, Newsweek said, oh, doesn't fit. Our trend that we have declared is that kids are turning in other kids for dealing drugs. And I thought, well, that may be the case, but this is not. This is actually a really interesting story that doesn't fit your trend. And, you know, I've done a lot of, you know, when I first started writing, I wrote a lot for a lot of women's magazines, and often they'd say, you know, tube tops are in. And you would say, okay, and they'd say, find us a few people who can give you a quote about tube tops being in. And then you might encounter someone and say, well, oh, I don't think they're in. They say, well, we're not using that quote. <laughs> we want more of the tube tops are in. So it's that, and, and I think it's a terrible tendency to make a decision in an office somewhere that there is a particular truth, and then you plug in examples to support it. I mean, what could be less real? Now, I'm not doing trend pieces, I'm not, you know, obviously this is a very different kind of reporting, but the, I mean, the fact is you enter a story, and part of why I think nonfiction is so interesting is that unlike fiction where you make a decision about where the story is going to go, you don't make a decision where the story is going to go, you end up with the set of facts and set of people and there's always logic, because life is logical. It may just not be the story you had in mind. So John LaRoche, you know, midway through my reporting, says, I'm done with orchids. I got rid of all my orchids. I'm not, I have nothing to do with them anymore. And I was like, you're ruining my book. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly it occurred to me, well, no, this makes perfect sense. That's who he is. And then, weirdly enough, the book actually came alive around that realization that this was about these serial passions that he engaged in and abandoned. 
and that, yeah, it was about orchids, it was about this particular case, it was, you know, about the world I encountered there, but in terms of this thematic truth, that was much more real, first of all, because it was real, but also because it became much more interesting to me, where I, at the end of the book, suddenly thought, even though initially I was thinking this is so strange and how could you give up on something that you've been so passionate about, the realization that, well, this is actually what a journalist does. This is really very much the, the blueprint of my own life that I throw myself into stories and then I'm done. And it, so it became actually much deeper and more interesting to me. 